So, seeing as there has been a whole bunch of narcissistic, overly emotional, spoiled BLM brats running around destroying public-private property, we have also seen an emergence of yet another false dialectic. So the question before us, the dialectic is, should we rip down Confederate statues or should we keep them up, right? Now, it's a false dialectic because <laughs> most of the people today, definitely the raging atheist on the right who is in favor of tearing down these statues, are moral relativists and if you are a moral relativist you don't get to tell anybody what's moral what's not you don't get to tell anybody what's good or what's bad you could express your opinion but you don't get to push your opinion onto anybody else because what's good or what's bad according to you is determined by the subject that you're talking to so it's just the, the whole conversation is a non-starter for anybody who's a moral relativist. And it's a non-starter because history does not fall under the purview of morality. In other words, history is supposed to be an unbiased record. That's all. But what these people are arguing, which is why I call this a false dialectic, and maybe that's wrong, while they're pretending to argue what's good or what's bad, what both of them are arguing for is that the only history that gets to be recorded is that of moral history. Whatever anybody believes is good. Just, just the things that happened in the past that are deemed good today. Which in the world of moral relativism means what? Because what's good and what's bad is constantly changing, right? It's subject to change. That means the end of history. Because whatever is deemed good is going to get recorded. Eventually someone's going to deem it bad and they're going to topple that structure. So whereas these guys are pretending to argue whether these statues should be kept up or not. What both of them are saying is that it's okay to tear them down as soon as, at some point, somebody decides that they are bad. Or enough people do. As if history cared about your feelings, right? As if... <laughs> As if, it, you know, it, it, the, the most ridiculous and the hypocritical thing about all of this is that if these people haven't yet, at some point in their life, they will say, history is written by the winners, and they will bemoan that fact, that they have a problem with it, while at the same time looking to be the winners who get to decide to write history. Now, obviously, there are lots of problems with history and everything has not been recorded properly. I get that. So I have no problems with revision, revisionist history. If, if you want to put a plaque next to these statues saying that, you know, even though Ben Franklin was the modern-day Prometheus, which is questionable in and of itself, right? So if he was a good boy on the one side, well, he was also a bad boy because he banged his black slave. Or something like that. If you want to put that on the plaque next to Ben Franklin's statue somewhere, that's fine. Right? Revise the history. Because even if he was a bad guy in, in, in some respect, right? He did some things which we consider immoral. Even objectively so. But if he did play a significant role in giving people electricity, right? Or developing whatever technology. 
then that still makes them great. Okay? Historical significance of the word great, or better yet, in historical terms, great has nothing to do with morality. It's not the superlative of good in a moral sense. Great just means, historically speaking, that you had an impact on a lot of people. You changed the course of human history. You impacted our culture. You had, you were just impactful, great, right? Hitler was a great man, which doesn't mean he was morally correct, but he was a great man. Genghis Khan was a great man, one of the greatest men in history. And they have plenty of statues of him, big ones too, right? And if history is correct, he murdered, he and his armies murdered tens of millions of people, right? But that's exactly what makes him great. He had a huge impact on society. History does not fall under the purview of what you think is good or bad, which in today's world seems to be subject to change anyway. This is a ridiculous conversation. Now, if you want to take these statues and maybe put them in a museum somewhere and, and you know, describe the history as accurately as possible and, and, and talk about the good and the bad of these men, that's fine. But that's not what BLM are doing. They're toppling the statues completely and utterly destroying them, destroying history. So again, I have no problem with historical revisionism because I am for truth, but I have a problem with destroying history. But not only are BLM destroying history, they're completely and utterly destroying culture. Because whereas traditionally the types of men we put on the pedestal or make statues of were great men, men that did something, good or bad, not some porn star loser who may or may not have been murdered by some loser cop, right? That's not a great man. So while these people are tearing down statues of truly great men, even if they were evil, they're putting a man that was no less evil, according to everything we know about him, on the pedestal, even though he hadn't done anything great. Right? They literally, somewhere in the world, have now have a street named after George Floyd. And it won't be long before they have a statue of him somewhere. Next to truly great men like Martin Luther King. Right? They're literally, not only are they erasing history, they're completely and utterly destroying culture. Because there's, there's nothing significant, productive or, or good or great in a historical sense about a guy that even according to BLM themselves is a dime a dozen, right? Just another black man killed by white police. And there are tons of them. There's nothing great about that man. Even according to BLM, he's just a dime a dozen, right? But they want to take some regular dude and put him on a pedestal and they want to take great men who had a cultural impact, who created culture. They want to take these great men and topple them because they were perhaps equally as evil as George Floyd, who himself never contributed anything to culture. He was just a parasite, cultural parasite, who never produced anything worthwhile. So once again, this is a false dialectic. The guy on the left has no right from within his own worldview, belief. He has no right to tell anybody what's moral and what isn't. And it's likely that the guy on the right doesn't either. And whereas they're pretending to debate what's moral and what's not, which they shouldn't be doing in the first place, what they're actually doing is destroying history. Clown world, people.
Clown World. Thanks for watching.